I get calls on a regular basis asking me about buffers. And people are constantly asking me, will you make a video about buffers? Well, I've succumbed, succumbed to the pressure. Here is a video about buffers. So actually, this is a scanning electron micrograph of one of the most famous buffers. Hopefully you guys all know this buffer. It's inside your body. It's blood. Blood contains a bicarbonate buffer. So let's begin this amazing journey into the world of buffers. Here we go. So I'm sure you're asking yourself, what is a buffered solution or buffered solutions? Well, buffer solutions resist a change in pH. So you're going to stay at that same level. The next question is you say, how do they do that? Well, buffers are made of a weak acid and its conjugate base, or a weak base and the salt of that acid. So we're going to talk about today how you make that. So after the addition of a strong acid or base, you deal with a stoichiometry. This is when you add the strong acid or base to the, to the buffer, and then you have an equilibrium. So how does this buffer stuff work? Well, would this be a buffer? I think it is, because if you notice here, we have hydrofluoric acid. Hopefully you remember that's a weak acid. And we also have the salt or the conjugate base of that buffer, the fluoride ion. So how does that work? Well, if you were to add hydroxide, it came out of nowhere, there's hydroxide to this. What's gonna happen is this is gonna produce basically fluoride ions. So you're going to produce water and fluoride ions and that will get rid of any hydroxide as long as you have excess hydrogen fluoride. If you add acid to it, which is adding tons of protons, that came out of nowhere. What happens is that reacts with the fluoride ion and forms HF. So basically you've not changed the pH at all because you've absorbed either hydroxide or protons. It doesn't matter which side it comes from. Let's keep going. So how does a buffer work? That's, that's an important question. Well, let's say we have a buffer that's made of hydrogen fluoride or hydrofluoric acid and the salt of that, sodium fluoride. One of my favorite things to do in chemistry is to list major species. Do it now! How many did you come up with? Hopefully you said four. There are four major species. Here they are. Hydrofluoric acid, sodium ion, fluoride ion and water. So which part is a buffer? Well, hopefully you know that by now. The buffer is the weak acid and the salt or the conjugate base of that. Now, the salt is a sodium fluoride. The conjugate base happens when it dissolves in water. What happens when you, when you add a strong acid to this buffer? I'm going to give you a reaction that illustrates that. So it's the, the strong acid is going to react with the fluoride ion and form hydrofluoric acid. And any time you remove protons or hydroxides from water, you have thus not changed your pH or you buffered the system. Now, let's say we have a strong base. Now, if you have a strong base, it's going to react with the hydrofluoric acid and form water and fluoride ion. Now, I know you're sitting there, and this is going to do this. As long as hydroxide is limiting, you'll get rid of every bit of it. Now, I know you're sitting there asking yourself, well, I know hydrofluoric acid produces a few protons, and I know fluoride acid reacts with water and produces a few hydroxide ions. Well, you are absolutely correct. But remember, any hydrogen or protons that are produced by hydrofluoric acid or any hydroxide that's produced by the reaction of fluoride ion with water are minor species. And minor species don't do much, right? So we don't have to worry about them. They, so they change the pH maybe a little bit, but not drastically. So that's how a buffer works. This is pretty exciting. Let's keep going. So how does a buffer work? Well, you add the hydroxide, and the hydroxide is basically replaced by an anion, or the conjugate base, and basically doesn't change the pH very much. So is a following a buffer? Wow. I want to know. So a solution made of acetic acid and sodium acetate. Well, I believe... That is a weak acid, and I think that's a solid weak acid, which has its conjugate base. So it should be. Let's just list the major species, because I love listing major species. How many do you think there are? Hopefully you said four. Let's see. We have acetic acid. It is not split up because it's a weak acid. We have the acid ion, the sodium ion, and water. So the buffering part 
is the acetic acid, which combines with hydroxide, or the acetate ion, which is right here, which combines with a proton. So this is an excellent buffer. And so you put it in there, you get the pH, and the pH just changes a little bit. It doesn't change a lot, it changes a little bit. All right, let's keep going. So how does a buffer work? This is basically what we just said. It changes the, the, uh, the hydroxide to the anion, so it doesn't change the pH very much. So, how do you make a buffer? I'm going to give you, back up, how do you make a buffer? I'm going to give you six ways to make a buffer. Let's go over the first two. You mix a weak acid and a salt. We just talked about that. I bet you can guess the second one. You mix a weak base and it's salt. Now, the next ones are going to be like, where are these coming from? Well, all the other ones we're going to talk about basically end up that you're going to make the first two. Because you're going to have a reaction and then you're going to end up with either one or two. So let's see what you're talking about. So we're going to add excess weak acid and strong base. We're going to list the major species because you know I like doing that. And I'm going to show you how this works. And then we're also going to do another example like that. I'm going to excess weak base and strong acid and see how that makes a, a buffer. Now the next two I'll just show you on the slides here. Remember we said there's six ways to make a buffer? We've gone through four. Number five, excess salt of the weak acid and the strong acid. Now the strong acid has to be limiting. So what happens is you add the strong acid, like hydrochloric acid, to sodium fluoride, and those protons from the strong acid form hydrofluoric acid, and then the fluoride ions, are they should be in excess, and then the proton should be used up because that's limiting. So at the end, wow, we have a buffer. Okay, let's do another one. This is awesome. Number six, excess salt. Excess salt. That word is really hard to pronounce if you're from Kentucky. So just be patient, please. Excess salt of the weak, at, of the weak base and a strong Excess salt of the weak base and a strong base. Okay, so you add something like ammonium chloride. The chloride is a spectator ion floating around. And then you add the strong base of your hydroxide. Well, guess what? This hydroxide needs to be limiting. Gosh, and I, I screwed this up. This is supposed to be water right here. I apologize for those of you that love to count my mistakes. Just add this to the list. All right, so hydroxide is going to be used up. It's limiting. And at the end, you have a buffer. You have a weak base and basically the acid that goes that way, weak base. So yet another way to make a buffer. I said six ways to make buffers. Let's go over three and four and a visual representation. So let's say these are our major species. We've got acetic acid, and then we add the strong base, sodium hydroxide, and water. So what happens, you know this, you know the, the deal here, sodium, sodium hydroxide is going to react with acetic acid and form, guess what? Acetate ions. So as long as this sodium hydroxide is limiting and is used up completely, you will end up with a buffer. The major species you end up with are, bam, there they are. No sodium hydroxide disappeared. All the hydroxide reacted with the acetic acid and produced the acetate ions. And so that's a part that absorbs the protons or the acid. And then the base would be absorbed by the, uh, so, uh, the acetic acid. So that's uh, one way to make a buffer. Let's go, that's the acid route. Got to be careful when you're pronouncing that word, acid. And now we're going to go the base route. Let's do that. So the base route, we have the major species. We've got a strong acid here. Watch out, strong acid. And we've got ammonia. And so what happens? This a proton from the strong acid is going to react with ammonia. And I think you know what it's going to form. Watch out, this is going to happen very quickly. Whoa, there it did. You're going to form ammonium. So now we have the acid form, of, the, which is the acid that goes with this weak base. And so now we have a weak base and it's conjugate acid. So we have a buffer. A buffer. That's fabulous. All right, last thing. And now we've talked about that. And this shows what happens when you add protons, basically produce a little bit more of the weak acid. When you add hydroxides, basically produce a little bit more of the conjugate base. But notice we have no more hydroxide or no more, no more protons because these are limiting. All right, so next. Ah, this is an awesome equation. This is a henderson hosbach This is awesome because you do not ever have to convert to molarity. I know it says 
the brackets, which mean molarity the way it's written there, but you can use, it's a ratio. So you can use moles, you can use one of my personal favorites, millimoles, or you can use concentrations. That's so old school, but you can do any of those. Let me show you some examples. So let's say you have a buffer system that you have the acid as 5 molar and the base as 3 molar. So you have a 3 to 5 ratio, so that's 0.6. Let's say you're a little bit short on cash, and so you had to dilute it quite a bit, and so you have a 0.05 and a 0.3 ratio. Guess what? It's still 0.6. So this illustrates when you're using, let's go back to the henderson hasbach equation, as long as it's the same ratio, if you dilute it, it doesn't change the pH of the solution. What determines the pH is the pKa of that substance you're using. So let's do some more. Now these are a couple of things that show us how to make a buffer. This is making a buffer from, hopefully you can see this, from excess wheat base and limiting strong acid. So that limiting strong acid is used up completely. So at the end we're left with ammonia, ammonia and ammonium. So we have a buffer, and notice a proton is used up completely. I think I have one more of these for your excitement. Notice a major species at the end. Weak base and its conjugate acid are both present, so that is definitely, chemistry students, a buffer. One more. Last one, we add a strong acid to a salt of a weak acid. So, for example, we put dissolved sodium acetate in water, then add hydrochloric acid to it, but the hydrochloric acid needs to be limiting, and that's going to be used up completely. Then at the end, we end up having acetate ions and acetic acid, so that is, again, yet, guess what? It's a buffer. So this is going to conclude our discussion on buffers. My, how time goes very quickly when we talk about something as wonderful as buffers, but if you have more questions, guess what? We're going to get a lot of fun with buffers in class tomorrow. Come prepared.